Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of biology and of course I'm glad to have you again and today we are looking into the uh, phylum or codata all right and we said that what uh, uh, this is what this is a vertebrate all right and we'll talk about in the last episode that what that the uh, that the vertebrates are a sub phylum of the phylum codata okay or the phylum codata or codata so they are codates they are called dates, C H O R O D A T E S. Okay, so that is that for that. And then of course, we say that they are divided into five classes. We have what the PCCs, we have the hives, we have the reptilia, we have the uh, uh, amphibians, we have what the uh, the mammalians. Okay, so those are what the classes. But today we are going to begin with the what with the PCCs. All right, and of course. Uh, this video tutorial is brought to you by the O3 Schools Jump app, all right? And I said it is all you need to succeed in your exam. Okay, so when we are done with this, we are going to take questions from the app to show you how, would, how you should use the app and how useful the app it is to you. Your jump exam is a jump CBT exam. The app is a CBT practice app. So it has everything you need to succeed. All right, we'll talk about the app later. Now, let's jump on to uh, PCCs. Now, the PCCs include the fishes, which are all aquatic. Okay, so you know fishes now, all right? There are fishes. Do fishes stay on the on the land? No, fishes are not terrestrial. They are what? They are aquatic. That is why whenever you buy maybe catfish or you buy any type of fish and you put it and maybe you put inside a, a small bowl, maybe it now jumps out of the bowl, all right? You will see the way it is struggling. Okay, you see the way it, it is wriggling. So it does not want to stay on the what? On the land does not want to stay on the ground because that is not its own natural habitat. Okay, so they include what fishes which are all aquatic. They are aquatic. They live on water, not what in land. Okay, so now they are cold blooded. What I mean that by cold, cold blooded does not mean say they get their blood they cold. That if you touch their blood, their blood will be cold. That does not what it means. So what cold blooded means is that they do not have the ability to regulate their own body temperature. They do not have the ability to regulate their body. They cannot regulate their body temperature. All right, but. What happens is that what the temperature of the environment, all right, is what what decides what that temperature is, what regulate that temperature, all right. So they cannot they by themselves regulate that body what temperature. Okay, that body temperature is dependent on the temperature of the what of the environment. So those are what cold blooded. All right, now we also say that what the possession of fins, they possess what fins, f i n s, they possess fins, f i n s. F, please take note of that. They possess what fins for balance and movement. So for balance and movement in their aquatic habitat, right? They possess what fins for balance and what? And movement. Okay? Now, the caudal fin or the tail fin, the caudal, C-A-U-D-A-L, caudal, C-A-U-D-A-L, the caudal or tail fin, is the main thing used to what? Used to move the fish forward in water. So as uh, the fish is moving forward in water, the coda or the tail fin, it is what is responsible for propelling the fish forward in what? In water. So you must take note of that. So the coda fin is called the tail fin. The coda or tail fin is the main thing used to move the fish forward in water. Why the dorsa? The dorsa and the anal fin. All right? On top, located on top and bottom, help the fish to balance and keep it from rolling over. So the uh, the coda or the tail fin is the main fin used to move the fish in the world in the forward direction. Okay, while the dorsal and the anal fin that are located on the top and what on the bottom help the fish to what to balance and keep it from what from rolling what over. All right, so that is what that for that. So you must take note of what of this. We have what the coda or the tail fin here. The caudal or the tail fin, they will have the dorsal fin and what and the anal fin. Okay, we're going to well, look at look at them again before the end of this class. All right. Now, also number three, the paired fins help with steering. The paired fins we're talking about here are the pectoral fin and the pelvic fins. Okay, this pectoral and the pe pelvic fin, they are the pet fins that help what the what the pieces or the fishes what to what to keep what steering for steering. It's for what they use them for steering, 
S T E E R I N G for what? For staring. I think this has come out in the past question before. Please stay to the end of this class and you will know. Okay, we are going to take questions from the OT School Jam app. Okay, so because there are questions there are past and likely exam questions. So we are going to see what this question is. I'm sure it's a past question. Okay, so we are going to look at it. Now, they possess what? Paired fins which help what? With what? With staring. Right, as you can see, they possess what the pectoral and the pelvic fin. Those are what the paired fins are. Now, four, possession of scales. Okay, so they have scales. I'm sure when you have bought fish, maybe your mother told you, I'm going to clean the fish now, I'm going to clean the fish, maybe ice fish now. So you see that there's the part, it's where really, really scales are where you use your knife to go to school. To scratch up is very it's very very hard. Okay, is to protect what the fish for what from injuries and also to protect it from what from infection that is what along the side of what of the fish. Okay, so that is what what the skills is what the skill on the fish is very important. All right, is to protect the fish against injuries and infection. All right, so you must take note of that. The skills are useful. All right, but for you, you may not want to eat it. You scratch it or bed for the fish. For the fish, important too. All right, so now let's continue. Number five, it's a possession of geese for gaseous exchange. So for gaseous exchange, fishes use what? Gills, G-I-L-S. This is where Jam said that question from. These are very important, okay? So they possess what? Gills for gaseous exchange or for what? For respiration, all right? Now, a gill cover known as operculum helps to protect the gills. It, it, it is a, there's, a, there's a gill cover. There's, a cover there's, there's something that covers the gills that is called what, the operculum. This operculum helps to protect what the gills. Okay, because the gills is a very, very important organ, right? So it has what a cover. Also, we also have what we call gill rakers. Gill rakers, gill rakers, R-O-A, R-O-A, K-E-R-O-S, gill rakers. Okay, these rakers are used to what to protect what uh, debris or particles or food particles from entering into the gill. Okay, so that is the function of the gill rakers. It's very very important also. All right, why the operculum is to protect what the gill generally. This one to prevent to prevent particles, food particles or debris or any type of particle along the side of the fish, uh, along the, 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 along what the, the, along the environment of the fish from entering into what, into the gills. So it protects it. So that's the function of the gill rakers. Why the gill, uh, cover is called what the operculum. Now, they possess nerves, okay, for smelling, okay. So just, just as you get long nose, some of your nose, eh, if you draw it, your nose is very long, okay. So you can smell, you can smell very far, you not know, like my very small nose, okay. So the fishes also they have what you call N A R O E S. They have nerves, nerves, N A R O E S nest for what for smelling. Okay, that's what word they use for to smell, just like the way we have what nose ribs. All right. Now, number seven, possession of swim bladder. Okay, or hair bladder for buoyancy. Okay, this swim bladder or hair bladder is to what keep the fish afloat. Okay, to keep it floating on the water so it can float for long. Okay, because they have what swim bladder or hair bladder. This swim bladder contains what gas. Yeah, it contains what hair. Okay, it contains what hair. So it's what helps to what the fish what to to what to stay afloat on what on the water. All right, so that was sinking. All right, so we have number eight. They possess lateral lines that contain sensory hairs. Okay, the control what you see is a lateral line on the fish that what that contains what sensory what hairs to detect what vibration. Okay, they, they contain what lateral what lines that contain sensory hairs to what to detect what vibration. Maybe uh, a moving a ship is coming coming close to the environment. Maybe uh, a, a boat is coming. You know that vibration they will be feeling. So the world, that lateral line, everything to what to know because it will what it is also what to be vibrating. Okay, so the possession of lateral lines that contain sensory hairs to detect what vibration. Likewise, fishes they have two chamber hearts. I want to put that down. That is this number eight. So let us just add to it for those of you that are very that are writing. Right. The reason why we use this method is for those who want to, because biology, you have to study and keep what studying. You have to read your notes over and over what again. All right. So 
uh, uh, please like this video. Do not forget to like this video. As you are watching the video now, right? You can just click on that like button like this. It doesn't take anything from you. It's just to make other students easily find this video. Also, do not forget to, uh, to subscribe to this channel. Subscription is completely free. Just click on the subscribe button so that whenever we post a, a, a video, you get a notification that we have posted the video. That is all. And do not forget to share this video. All right. So, like we said, they have uh, two chambered hearts. So, you can see number nine now. They have a uh, possession. Two chambered hearts. These two chambered hearts are called uh, the atrium and the ventricle okay so the fish is what they have what two two chambered hearts the atrium and what and the ventricle you must take note of that so that is number nine then number ten you know that they possess what a streamlined body they possess a well streamlined body in fact that's what made them very very well adaptive that's one of one of the major things that made them very adaptive in the aquatic world environment they possess a streamlined body that's why everybody wants to swim like a fish you want to streamline your body like, oh, like a fish so that you can move like them in the water okay so they have what they possess what possession you can say 10 now possession of a stream lined body for easy movement okay so that is what that all right so these are two extras that i just added they have two chambered at the atrium and the ventricle like we have seen and also possession of a streamlined body for easy movement all right now i haven't seen this you would know that what class uh, fishes are what or pieces that are divided what into what two classes okay we have the bony we have what the cartilaginous what fishes we have the bony fishes we have also the bony uh, pieces and what and the cartilaginous what pieces or fishes okay so i'm going to look at them now the uh cartilaginous fishes are called what the chondrites okay they have what one the con chondrites okay chondrites and they will also have what the uh chondrich sorry chondrites chondrich Yes, and they also have also our the oak stick, yes. Okay, our the oak stick, yes. Okay, so these are what the two what classes. Okay, fishes are classified into what two? The chondrites and what and the oak stick what? Yes. Okay, if you cannot pronounce this, if you cannot pronounce this, let's say for 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 any reason you cannot pronounce this, there's no need to what to struggle with this. Just know that they also mean the same thing for what cartilaginous fishes and what and bony fishes. So these ones are called cartile, cartilaginous fishes. Why these ones are called what, the bony fishes. All right, so you must take note of that. So two classes of fish we have are what the cartilaginous fishes and what and the bony what fishes. All right, so now let's quickly see what the cartilaginous what fishes are. Cartilaginous fishes are fishes cartile, cartilaginous fishes are fishes with soft cartilaginous skeleton soft cartilaginous skeleton okay so cartilaginous fishes are what fishes with what with soft cartilaginous uh, cartilaginous was skeleton an example uh, of course we have the shark eg we have the shark we have the race we have what the dog fish all right and so on and so forth this one is an example of what of cartilaginous what fishes there are fishes with, with soft cartilaginous skeleton if you have the shark we have the race we have the dog fish we also have um, the skates let me say skates not and skates these are all what cartilaginous what fishes there are fishes with what soft cartilaginous skeleton all right now also we have what the bony fishes on the other hand bony fishes bony fishes these are fishes 
with body skeleton. All right, the bony fishes are fishes with what with body skeleton. Example are salmon, e.g., you have salmon. Okay, this is what this is an example of, of a bony fish. We also have sardines. We also have a cod fish. We have herring. We have cod fish. We have herring. It is a, these are all what are bony or fishes. Okay, so we say two classes: the chondrites, known as the cartilaginous fishes, and the oxtates, yes, known as what the bony fishes. All right, and I say that the cartilaginous fishes are fishes with soft cartilaginous skeleton. Soft cartilaginous skeleton. Example. A shark, rays, dogfish, skate. All right. While well, the bony fishes, these are fishes with body skeleton. E.g., we have the salmon, we have the sardines, we have the codfish, we have the herring, and what and the likes. So now, what I'm going to do now is to what see the difference between what bony fishes and cartilaginous fishes. All right. So in a tabular form, I'm going to show you the differences between uh, cartilaginous fishes and what and bony fishes. All right. Now let's see. Please, like I said, this video tutorial is brought to you by the O3 School Jam app. It is all you need to succeed in your exam. It has all the past questions for all subjects in one application. For all subjects in application, it has some wonderful features. Like, of course, you have what the classroom feature where you can study lecture notes according to your jam syllabus and also what take tests. Likewise, we also have the question search feature where you can search for question, all right, according to what topic and all the questions that Jam has said under that topic will come out for you to answer. Also, we have what the UTM challenge, a challenge that will conduct for all students that are partaking what in Jam this year. All you need to do is what is to compete with your mates, win prizes every week, amazing prizes every week till one week to your main Jam exam. So uh, you have the opportunity to participate in many mock exams online. All right. You participate with many mock exams, you get used to what how jam set their question, you build your confidence toward the main exam. And of course, I'm going to release your score after every challenge. So that will make you know how prepared you are as you will continue to prepare for your work for your examination. So activation as at the time we're shooting this video is just 30,000 naira. It's a chicken change, okay? It's the price you have to pay for your success. It's very, very chicken change. The reason why I'm saying it's very small, okay? So please just pay that money if to what to activate, just download the app when you're done downloading click on activate on the app and you will see what at the top where the road buy activation key follow the procedure you can transfer by making transfer make sure that you are sending the receipt to this number on whatsapp 091215152 send the word the receipt of your payment if i using pos if somebody is transferring for you and anyhow you are making the payment make sure that what you send the receipt or the payment to this number on whatsapp so you get identity to so also please uh, if you're using what your ATM card, you can pay online. That one is automatic what activation. All right, so please, there's nothing like scam here. Get the app today. It is to what help you practice and study. Now let's see differences between bony fishes, bony fishes, and then cartilaginous genus fishes. Okay, so now. For the bony fishes, so bony fishes are what? Either what? Marine or freshwater. They can be found both in what? In marine or freshwater what? Habitat. Okay? So they can both, they can both be marine or fresh water. Okay? Why? For what? Cartilaginous fishes, they can only be what? They can only be what marine so they can only be found in what in marine what habitats all right this one that can be found in marine habitat or freshwater habitat this one that can be only be found in what in marine habitat okay so now this one for the bony fishes and their endoskeleton is made up of what bones endoskeleton is made up of bones okay for the bony fishes their endoskeleton is made up of bones or right, for the cartilaginous fishes their endoskeleton is made up of what cartilage as you can see cartilaginous 
cartilage. Okay, so that is that for that. So this one's the endoskeleton is made up of bones. Why for this ones the endoskeleton is made up of what of cartilage. All right. Now the bony fishes have four pair of gills. All right. You know, gills is the what is the organ for what for respiration. All right. That's what they used to what, carry out gaseous exchange. Okay. Why bony fishes have four pairs of gills? Right. Uh, cartilaginous fishes have what five to seven pair. Of what of gills you must take note of that. All right, now bony fishes have four pairs of gills. Why what uh, cartilaginous fishes have what five to seven pairs of gills? Now the uh, exoskeleton, exoskeleton is made up of cycloid scales. Scales, okay, why yeah. Exoskeleton is made up of placoid scales. Okay, now for what the uh, uh, exoskeleton of the bony fishes, it is what is made up of what of cycloid or scales. What we mean by cycloid scales is that what that they are scales, the scales on their body. You know what the scales are, right? The scales on the body here, they are round. They are round and flexible. Okay, the scales on the body of bony fishes are what cycloid. The cycloid what type? Okay, so the the scales are what are round and what and flexible. But for what for the uh, uh sorry for the cartilaginous what fishes rather the what the isoskeleton is made up of scales that are of the placoid what type? Okay, they have placoid scales. In the say that what the scales are what are somewhat what somewhat triangular. Okay, and they are very very rough and they are rough. All right, so that's one way to what to differentiate between what them. All right, now for the bony fishes, fertilization is external. Number five, fertilization is external. Okay, why here fertilization is internal? All right, now them are tail, their tail now, their tail is of the homosexual type. Okay, why what the tail of what of the cartilaginous species is, is of the heterosexual type? That tail is of the heterosexual type. Okay, so these are what the differences between what the uh, the uh, the bony fishes and the cartilaginous what fishes. What we talk about the tail here is about well, how, how symmetrical their tails are. Okay, how symmetrical the fins. Okay, and their tails are. All right. So these ones they are what homosexual. This one they are what heterosexual. All right. This one they are symmetrical. This one they are not symmetrical. All right. So these are what the differences between bony fishes and cartilaginous what fishes. We say they can both be marine or freshwater. Yeah, they can only be marine. Then you will say what endoskeleton is made up of what bones. Those one, the endoskeleton is made up of cartilage. Then you say four, they have four pairs of gills. This one, they have five to seven pairs of gills. Then we say what exoskeleton is made up of cycloid or scales. Why yeah, exoskeleton is made up of placoid scales. Yeah, fertilization is external. There, yeah, fertilization is what is internal. And then tail is of the hemosecal word type. Why yet yeah, their tail is of the word hemo ethyl word secal word type. Okay, these are the differences between bony fishes and cartilaginous word fishes. Now let's quickly look at what the usefulness of what of their fins. Okay, like their anna fins, their what their dorsal fins, and also their what their caudal word fins. Let's quickly see. You know the anal fin, right? The anal fin is located near the anal opening. It's located near the anal what opening to propel the fish, to propel what the fish. Okay, so we have the anal fins. Anal fin, it is the what located near the anal opening to protect to propel rather, propel what the fish. Okay, so it is well located well, near the well, near the anal opening. That's why it is called anal or fin. So we have the anal fin located near the anal opening and this is the word to propel what the fish. Then also have what the caudal fin. 
The caudal fin, also called the tail fin. Okay, so the caudal fin that is called what the tail fin is, is at the end of the fish. Is at the end of the fish, and the usefulness is also to what to propel the fish. All right, the caudal fin or the tail fin. All right, it's at the end of what of the fish, and it's what usually is to what to also what, propel what the fish. All right, so uh, located at the end of the fish to propel the what the fish then we now have what the last one which is what the dorsal or fin the dorsal fin okay this one is at the top or back side of what of the fish and also is to is for what for balance and protection it is what for balance and for what and for protection okay this one is as what at the top at the top Okay, or backside of what of the fish, and it is what to what for, for to give the fish what balance and what to protect what the fish. All right, so located at the top or the backside of the fish. All right, to what for balance rather for balance. And protection. All right. So these are what the usefulness of what the the fins. Okay, the anal fin located near the anal opening to propel the fish. The caudal or the tail fin located at the end of the fish to propel the fish. And they also have the dorsal fin located at the top or back side of the fish for balance and protection. So you must know what the usefulness of all of these what fins is very, very what useful as we are going to see right now from the past questions. Let me take what the OTD schools app now from my phone and then let's see some question from the uh, from what the pieces. Now, this is a two, 2019 question number 18. It is being displayed on your screen right now. They say the above organism can be classified under which phylum in the animal kingdom. Okay, so that's the diagram of a fish there. And we say that what? That the vertebrates are a subphylum of the word phylum caudata. So that means if pieces, right, is a class, right, of the vertebrates, all right, that means that what? It has to be under the phylum word caudata. All right, so our option A, they say nematoda, they say B, caudata, C, porifera, D, and the leader. So the correct answer there will be what? Will be B, caudata. All right, because we have told you that what? That the vertebrates that we are looking into right now, which are divided into five classes, the pieces, the halves, the beds, uh, sorry, the halves, uh, the reptilia, the uh, uh, mammalians, all right, they are all what? Under what? The vertebrates. Okay, they are a class of the vertebrates. So that means they will be also under B, they will also be what? Under what? The phylum what? Caudata. Now, let's see 2022 number seven. They say fish belongs to the class Fish belong to the class. It's not pieces. Okay, so that would be pieces. So A, they say amphibia. B, pieces. C, anelida. D, animalia. So the answer would be, what? Would be B, there, pieces. Very simple question, right? Easy to fail too. You can easily go and choose another thing. Now, uh, 2022, number seven. 2022, number seven. It said the following organisms possession of lungs for gaseous exchange, except... The following organism possession of lungs for gaseous as they possess lungs for gaseous exchange except all right so that means in the four options four uh, three possess lung for gaseous exchange why one doesn't so and of course as you can see a they say mammals is lungs b they say birds is lungs c reptiles is lungs where the d fishes is what is gills Fish, fish use gill for gaseous exchange. They use gills for respiration. All right? So that would be our correct answer, option D. Now, still from the Otter School Jump Up, uh, uh, 2000, year 2000, number four. They say the set of fins that control steering, hmm, that control what? That control steering, balancing, and change of direction and pitch in fish is 
the set of things. Okay, like I told you in the second point, right? I told you that what that the set of things that are used for what for steering, the pectoral fin and what and the pelvic word fin. So here yeah, it has been tested. They say a dorsal and anal fins. B they say pectoral and pelvic fins. C they say caudal and dorsal fins. D they say anal and pelvic uh, pelvic fin. And that means the correct answer there will be what be pectoral and what and the pelvic word fin. All right, well, I've already what explained that. Now, this is 1998, question number nine. They say the structure that prevents food particles from escaping through the fish gills, all right, are called gill what? All right, I told you that the operculum is to protect the gill, all right? But of course, the gill recast is what actually will prevent food debris particles from what go into the what into the gill so it also protects what the gill all right that the correct answer there will be they say option a is arches b they say filaments c they say recast d they say lamellae okay and the correct answer there is what is gill recast i've told you about that all right now in 1994 question number 10 which is the most important adaptation of bony fish life in water? The most important adaptation of bony fish life in water. Like I told you, that bony fishes, they have what streamlined body for what? For easy movement. So they say A, the possession of a streamlined shape. They say B, the presence of overlapping scales. C, the covering of the body by thin film of slime. D, the possession of a caudal fin. All right. The right answer there is what possession of a streamlined body. All right. That's why most human beings, if they want to learn how to swim, they want to behave like what they want to streamline their body like that of a fish. So that is the most important adaptation of bony fish in what in a bony fish life in what in water. The possession of a streamlined body for what for easy movement. So a correct answer there will be what option A. So there are so many thousands of questions on the application. So please head to the uh, head to your Play Store right now, download the application, like this video, subscribe, all right, and keep sharing. And I'll see you in the next class. Thank you for watching.